everyone welcome to big data thoughts so the last video that we had done was about spark architecture and i had promised to do one on the spark structured apis so here today we'll be talking about one of the structured apis which is called data frame and we'll look into details of what it is how uh, do we create data frames how do we read them save them etc so let's get started first of all let's take a recap of how uh, what are the different kinds of structured APIs and low-level APIs that Spark provides? So this picture kind of gives the overall summary of what all does Spark provide. So Spark has things uh, that enable us to do structured streaming, advanced analytics. It has a whole uh, bunch of libraries and ecosystem that is built to process big data. Now in that broadly there are two categories for APIs. The first is a high level or structured APIs and the second is low level APIs. When we talk about structured APIs, there are three, uh, primarily three APIs that Spark provides, data sets, data frames and SQL. And today we are going to look at data frames. So what is a data frame? A data frame, you can think of it as a two dimensional labeled data structure, just like a table or an Excel, which has columns and rows and you have labeled columns, which tells you what that data contains. So data frame is nothing but a two dimensional labeled data structure and the columns can be of potentially different types. Data frame can also be thought of as a SQL table or a spreadsheet or a dictionary of series objects. This is just to visualize it, how a data frame would look like. Let's try to understand very, very simple operations that can be performed on a data frame. So as we spoke about, a data frame can be visualized as a table and it can potentially have columns of different types. Also, we can create a data frame which where each row is an object of a class. So this is a sample code in Scala. Uh, now code can be written in multiple languages in Python, Scala, Java. So for, for just example, I've taken this Scala, uh, Scala um, code snippet. Now, what does it do? It is basically first defining a class called employee, which has properties of the employee are the ID, the name, etc. Now what we do to create a data frame, every row in that data frame we are creating as an object of the class employee so this here is creating a data frame where there are three employee objects being created with the id and name and then we are converting this to a data frame so this will just simply create a data frame which will have multiple rows each row is an object of a employee class now if this is one way of creating. The other way is that we load data into data frame using some file. Usually in a real world scenario, we will not go about creating each and every object of a class and then populating a data frame. We would typically read from a file which is kept on an existing location. So let's say there is a file kept on a location. We just want to read it and create a data frame. So this is again a um, Scala code where what we are doing is we are just doing a spark.read table so either I can read it from a table, two options, either I read from a table or I read from a file. So if I want to read from a table, I will just skip the full path, the catalog name, schema name, table name and use spark.read.table. Now see the beauty of structured API, we don't have to do much, there are inbuilt functions. Because it's a high level API, there are inbuilt functions. I just need to call the function spark.read.table and give the path of the table, like the the table that I want to read. Similarly, when I want to create a data frame from a file, what I'll do is I'll say spark.read.format. So I specify a few things. What is the format? It's a CSV file. Is there a header available in that file? Yes. Then I provide header as true. And then there are certain other options that we can tell Spark while creating the data frame what it should do. Options like should it infer schema? Yes, we want Spark to infer schema. And then we give a load location, which is the location of the file. So our job is very simple because Spark has designed these APIs to be uh, very, very simple for us to use with just few parameters. So these are the two ways of reading data into a data frame. Now, how do we display the data frame? So display, there, there are two ways to display. Either we say display, it's a function provided we display the data frame or we say on the data frame we can call a function called print schema. 
which will give the schema of the data frame. The sprint schema actually gives us the schema that the data frame has but in a tree like format with all the column names and the data types. So it's a good way to look at how is our data frame structured. Then comes saving the data frame. So how do we save it? Either we want to save it as a table or do we want to save it as a file? So then there are simple functions like save as table. So we call write save as table and give the table name so that the data frame is saved as into that table. Similarly, if you want to save the data frame results or the data frame into a file, we can specify what format uh, the file is needed. So here it is, let's say JSON and then we say dot save and give the location. So what it will do, it will DF is the data frame. So this data frame would be written in a file at this location in the JSON format. So we looked at what is a data frame and some of the basic basic operations how we can do on a data frame but one of the very important concept to understand here is how does an execution of structured API happen internally what happens in the background or what does spark do when it looks at a code where we are trying to manipulate a data frame. So first of all, uh, if you want to understand structured API execution, we need to understand what are the steps that are happening here and then we'll go into the details. So first of all, what we will do for any of the high uh, level structured APIs, data frame, data set, SQL code, what is happening is we have written a code which is doing some uh, actions. Now if the code is valid, first check that Spark does this to see whether the code is valid or not. If the code is valid, syntactically correct, Spark converts this into a logical plan. That's the first step. Now, then once the logical plan is made, Spark will convert it into a physical plan and it does lot of optimizations along the way. So if you look at different versions of how Spark has progressed the whole journey of Spark, it has been adding different kinds of optimization, cost based optimization, execution based optimization with each version of Spark. Now after creating a logical plan, there will be a series of optimization after which a physical plan will be created. Physical plan is the actual plan that will get executed. So Spark forms a DAG in the background, which is a directed acyclic graph. If you look at a DAG, the vertices are nothing but the RDDs, which is a low level abstract, um, API or the basic building block of Spark. So in the DAG, when it creates a physical plan, there is a DAG. The DAG is nothing but a collection of RDDs and the operations that are getting performed on the RDD. So vertices are RDD. Each of the connections between those vertices are actually the operations that are getting performed. The DAG scheduler will read that DAG and actually convert it into stages and tasks and the Spark uh, job will start getting executed. So it is our code, a syntactical check then a logical plan, optimizations, then a physical plan, a DAG gets created, DAG scheduler runs that, uh, converts that DAG into stages and tasks. That's the overall flow of how a Spark program runs in the background. Now let us look at it in a bit more detail. So whatever uh, structured APIs we have, they will be fed to a catalyst optimizer. Catalyst optimizer is a inbuilt optimizer that Spark has it will use that optimizer to convert the logical plan into a physical plan. What will happen when we talk about the logical plan? The user code or the code that we have written, it will first create an unresolved logical plan. What does unresolved logical plan means? Any kind of tables, columns, etc. that we are using in that code are still not resolved. The next step will be after creating an unresolved logical plan, next step will be to refer to the catalog to understand what columns, what tables are there and then a resolved logical plan is created. After which there will be optimizations applied based on what resolved logical plan Spark gets and that is where an optimized logical plan is created. So even while creating a logical plan, <clears throat> there is a lot of background work that <clears throat> Spark does for us. That's the beauty of having structured high level APIs. We are not really looking into all of these things on our own. So Spark is taking the code, creating an unresolved logical plan, looking at the catalog, interpreting what columns, what data types, what is there, creating a resolved logical plan and then doing optimizations and creating an optimized logical plan. That's the second part of the 
uh, flow this logical plan is what it represents a set of abstract transformations okay there is no concept of executor driver nothing right now that comes very late in the game once we have created the dag the stage and task have been decided at this point of time the name itself says logical plan it is just a representation of a set of abstract transformations it is just converting the user code into a abstract set of transformations or a it's like a algorithm so when you we write program first we create an algorithm then we start writing the actual program so this you can compare as an algorithm the user code is getting converted to a unresolved logical plan and as i said this is unresolved because the code might be valid we don't know the tables column etc whatever the code is referring to might or might not exist at this point we don't know because it's all a logical abstraction then spark will actually use a catalog so sometimes the so catalog is what it tells me whether the column table are are correct or not so it has to resolve the columns and tables in this part so what spark does it refers a catalog to understand whether the entire code that we have written is valid in terms of the columns and tables we have used if those are not valid the analyzer will reject the unresolved logical plan we saw this right there is a unresolved logical plan then we refer the catalog and create a resolved one so if the columns are not or tables are not found and you would see this catalog can be the hive meta store that we are referring to right so you may be you may have written the scala uh, code in a databricks notebook and you may be referring to a hive meta store to get the column table information if it cannot resolve it will just throw an error right and it will reject that logical plan if it can resolve it then it goes to the phase where it is given to catalyst optimizer which will apply a set of rules to optimize that logical plan and do all those predi predicate push down selection to optimize now this is how this whole process of logic creation of logical plan happens the next step is creation of a physical plan now what happens we have written the algorithm syntactical checks have been done resolution in terms of schema the column the tables etc has been done and we have a optimized logical plan then it creates physical plans on which another set of optimizations are done by spark which are cost based okay i have a valid logical plan i create multiple physical plans it's just like we type some address in google it gives us multiple paths to reach there but then we can select what is most optimized so spark also does that it creates multiple physical plans from a logical plan it runs its cost model optimizer to, um, optimizer selects the best possible physical plan that's when we know that the execution can now start this best possible physical plan is nothing but the dag which is having the rdd and the operations to be performed on the rdd now we have the whole blueprint of how spark should run that code that is when it will divide it the dag scheduler will divide it into stages and task and the actual execution will start happening on the cluster where the resource manager comes into picture it is decided how many executors are needed which executors would be selected in the whole distributed cluster and the job is submitted and it runs so all this takes place in the background once a spark job is submitted so this is the summarization of what we spoke after creation of optimized logical plan spark will create a physical plan and then physical plan is not one multiple which actually tells you how it is going to execute and it will result in a series of rddds and transformation that's the dag Okay, so now I hope you understand where all this fits in logical plan, physical plan, DAG, DAG scheduler, the stage and task, the actual execution. How all this is tied up is what I just explained. So I hope this has given you a clarity in terms of what are high-level structured APIs, how they work in the background, or how Spark actually runs a code. So in the next video, we will talk about dataset APIs and the SQL, Spark SQL.